Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the Slow Crafting Podcast. My name's Nadine and I'm coming to you today from the northwest of England near Manchester. This is a bi-weekly podcast about trying to incorporate a slow living or slow fashion agenda into my uh, fibre crafts. So knitting, spinning, sewing, crochet, a uh, whole range of things whilst trying to increase my handmade wardrobe at the same time. Right, now, I have recorded this many times already. Uh, I had several false starts last week when I was trying to record it, and then I managed to get through a whole episode with no sound. Uh, (laughs) I'm hoping that this one actually works. Um, Otherwise, I'm going to be very, very grumpy. Technology is not my friend. Anyway, uh, this is just a quick episode today to talk to you about my progress with outfit number four um, for the year. So uh, if you watched last episode um, where I I introduced you to to what I was making, you will remember that there is a colour work hat, um, a shawl, uh, a pair of hand spun, hand dyed, hand knitted socks. Um, a dress and um, a cardigan that I was basically making up as I went along. Right, the the shawl was the Makariri shawl by Aroha Knits and that was the one that was in um, four different natural breeds, um, uh, breed specific yarns that I'd had that were hand spun. So it was the um, Massam, which was white, the white North Ronaldsey, the brown North Ronaldsey, and the sort of humbug blended colour um, Shetland one. But I finished that last by last episode. I still haven't blocked it, so it doesn't look any different. So there's no point in me showing you it again. But that's one finished item. The second finished item is the Rackwick hat. Uh, or berry or tam which was a knitting kit from Judith Glue um, in Orkney now I put the link in the last episode so uh, she hasn't got any of the same hats for sale but there are some very similar ones and I think there's some mitten patterns in there as well um, now I got this for my birthday from my, my sister-in-law who actually lives in Orkney still smells very sheepy and uh, very landlady so there you go. I haven't blocked this either. But oh, it did remind me how much I love colour work. I really do need to do more of it. Um, I was worried, um, I mentioned in the last episode, I was worried that it was going to be too small because it had a really low cast on number on very small needles. But it fits and I can wear it as a beanie. This is without blocking. Um, I don't have to wear it as a tam or a berry because I'm not sure I could pull it off, especially not trying to rearrange it in there. Yeah, I'm not convinced I'll stick to wearing it as a beanie, I think. But uh, yeah, so I was, I was really, it was really quick, really easy. Um, the the colours in there were with a really odd wool. Um, it was, I think it was almost a boucle yarn, um, very, very fine. It's not, it's not branded, so I can't tell you what it was like to give you a better description. It it was just like a really, really fine boucle. Um, and the pattern's not charted. It just gives you counted instructions, written instructions for when to change the colours and I wasn't paying attention so this top bit, the bit that's orange should be that red um, but I don't mind I don't think it necessarily has a massive impact um, and there is one row in the top where you do where you see a little red blob you can see it in amongst the orange where you're actually stranding three colours per row, not just two. But as it was only one stitch in the whole row, then it 
it wasn't a problem. Um, not one stitch in the whole row, one stitch in each colour repeated and then it was only a small number of stitches it wasn't a problem. So yes I'm really really happy with that and uh, we're actually getting the weather for being able to wear hats again now. I'll be uh, sporting that on my way up to school and back every day mm. unless it's raining because I panic by <laughs> wearing hand <laughs> hand knit hats during when it's raining so I just get soggy instead. But yes, very happy with that. The socks, um, it's the pattern is basket weave socks, basket weave rib socks by Sarah Ronchetti. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And these are hand spun using um, some Wensleydale fibre. So you can see a lovely fluffy halo on them. Um, I changed the pattern slightly because I did a one by one twisted rib at the top and I put a fish lips kiss heel in it. Um, but essentially I just put the main pattern into my normal stock sock recipe. Um, now I did have a bit of a, a, a problem. Well not a problem but just uh, not paying attention. Uh, with these socks. This not paying attention may be a theme when I come to discuss my cardigan later. So I was knitting on these at um, the toddler group that I run uh, on, a, on a Wednesday morning and I didn't have my um, tape measure with me so I was just going round and round and round and round and round and then when I got home I measured them and went oh they're a centimetre and a half too long um, before I started my toe decreases. So rather than rip it out, being lazy, I just did some more um, more rapid decreases for the for the toe, and it seems to come out all right. It it fits. It doesn't look weird, and it's not shaped oddly around my toe. So that that was a lucky escape, really. <laughs> it didn't all go disastrously wrong because I wasn't paying attention. I like my cardigan. But yes, this is um, the yarn that I spun. You can see it's quite tonal rather than uh, speckled or variegated. So I'm not sure this light might be blowing out a bit too much. But you should, in real life, you can see that it's varied. I mean, it looks quite grey on there, but it is a, a brownie grey. And it was the one that I dyed with tea and iron tablets too many iron tablets which is why I went grey. Um, I really like it so I've finished one and I am this far into the second one. Now it might not look the same as it does on here but that's because I uh, knit my um, I knit my socks inside out. Don't ask me to explain. <laughs> And it's just the way that I uh, got my head around magic loop. And so now whenever I magic loop, I, I do things inside out. So yes, I'm about at the right length for starting on the um, inch of stockinette before, on the back, before I start the fish lips kiss heel. So they're coming on, they're coming on quite well. That's those. Um, so we've done the shawl, the hat and the socks. The dress that I am going to sew is the metamorphic dress from by Meg from Sew Liberated. Now I forgot to get a picture of this last time I recorded and I've done exactly the same so I have to try and show you a picture on my phone. Um, where is the dress? Here we go. So there we are. It's a two layered dress so it's reversible and uh, it's got a high low hem on one of them so the second layer pokes out from beneath and both both dresses have pockets, patch pockets on. Um, it's sleeveless and quite oversized. 
very much my style at the moment. I'm looking forward to being able to wear it. But that's a long way off yet because I've only just printed the pattern pieces off. Now, the reason it took me ages to print them off is because I had to go to the library to do it because our print is still not working. And why it took me so long to go to the library to do it, I don't know, because I have to walk past the library six times a day at the moment. Because it's just round the corner from my house. And every time I go up to school to pick or drop off the children, um, I have to walk past it twice. <laughs> yes, but I've printed it off. Um, I'm not a, a massive fan of PDF patterns because I don't like sticking them together. But as you can see, this has got arrows on it so that you can line up to help make it easier to stick it together. So I'm hoping this is going to be a bit easier and less stressful sticking it together than uh, some of the other PDF patterns I've had to try and work with so far. So yes. Once I've uh, stuck all this together and cut the pattern out, um, I'll then put my fabric pieces out. And I, the, I've said the one layer that I'm going to do, I'm going to dye brown. So I'll cut the pattern pieces out and then dye the pattern pieces rather than dyeing the whole piece of fabric. Um, and then the second layer, which is with the sort of peachy, orangey colour, that was a bit worried might make me look naked when I was <laughs> from a distance. And um, I think I might do some embroidery on that, on the pockets and um, around the neckline, just so it's a bit less naked. Um, and on the on the hem of the, the longer layer, it does, you can see your hem on the front, like under the high low bit, because where you turn it up, you would obviously have a, a, a hem, a visible hem on there. And I did think about doing a, a rolled hem, but I think I'm actually just going to put some lace trim over the bit that I've hemmed. So it sticks out, you can, so you can see it from both sides basically, but one side it'll just look longer, just to cover up the hem. And, and make it look a bit more finished. And because I like lace in small amounts. So that's the dress. Now the cardigan. Oh, oh this lovely cardigan. Now, last week, um, I hadn't decided which, oh, not last week, last episode, hadn't decided which of the yokes I was going to do uh, on the cardigan. At that point, but I decided um, it, it's in the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible book by Hitomi Shida, and it's York Pattern 185, which is this one here. So I decided I'm going for that one in the end. Now, please take a look at this and see how crisp and clear the definition is on there. Now take a look at mine. They are not the same. <laughs> this is because I um, wasn't, well, I was knitting when I was tired and not paying attention to the instructions, basically. I just looked at it and went, yeah. And didn't do what it actually told me to do. <laughs> So basically, it was doing the wrong sort of decreases um, for these two sections. But then for this section, I did the right sort of decrease and it actually looks more like it does in the pattern. But I thought, because that was when I realised that I'd been doing it wrong. Now, at that point, I'm, I'm just like, oh, right, I'll just I'll just do it right from now on. And then I got through that, that repeat and looked at it and went, no, that looks a mess. It, it sticks out. A weird blobbiness. I don't know. That has to come out. So I'm showing you it now because it's both sleeves are done. Uh, the body's done. 
it's going to be a cropped body because I think it's only about 31 centimetres from my armpit to the bottom of the hem. Um, so, you know, there's the garter hem, there's the textured pattern at the bottom. Two sleeves and joined at the yoke and worked for three inches, which I now have to rip out and go right back to where I joined for the yoke. <sighs> Knitting wars. But it will look better when I've finished it if I rip it out and start again. So uh, that's what's happening with this cardigan. Which is a shame because I really want to wear it. <laughs> uh, and um, I was, my, the wool that I got, uh, I'm knitting that with is the, the one from my uh, local yarn shop that I spoke about last time. Warp Mill Yarns. Um, from Woolly Knit. And it, it's uh, my favourite wool to knit with. I know I've said this many times, but it really, really is. And then, um, but my local wool shop is being refurbished at the moment, so it's not actually open. <laughs> and I already have plans to go in once it reopens. But I was hoping that my cardigan would be knitted in time to wear for when I go, when it reopens. Because I'm so sad that I want to wear... <laughs> I want to wear my, knit, my hand knits when I go to the wool shop. Please tell me other people do this. Especially if it's knitted with a wool specifically from that wool shop um but no just like wondering with my hand knit <laughs> i can't be the only one i really can't but uh, there's no hope for us obsessive knitters is there i'm woolly obsessive right so that's the cardigan so everything's ticking along nicely um, it, um, my progress on it's not whizzing along, even though I do have slightly more time now that my youngest at, uh, at school as well, because I started on um, some birthday and Christmas knits um, and, and makes, so that's I'm, I'm sort of balancing it out across across all the projects. Yes, my my list of Christmas makes appears to be growing. I, I try and plan it every year and uh, it all, I always add too much because even if I uh, just do a like a short list of things that I want to make, I'll make those and go, oh, just, just add in a few more <laughs> until I'm adding in things like the night before Christmas and staying up until ridiculous times, finishing them off. But never mind. I do enjoy it really, even though I put silly deadlines on myself. Uh, I think next episode I'm actually going to talk to you about um, a couple of books that I have got from the library. One of them is the, the Curated Closet, Closet by Anushka Rees, um, which looks quite interesting because it's about uh, curating your closet basically. Uh, making sure that what's in your closet works for your style and not filling it full of stuff just because it's on sale or cheap or um, you've, you've seen one beautiful top but actually have nothing else to wear it with in your wardrobe and things like that and um, it, it talks through identifying your own personal style so I think there's some lessons in there that I can make use of planning my makes for next year um, particularly around when it comes to identifying your style and making sure that the clothes that you buy or in my case make fit into that style and fit into other items within your existing wardrobe so I'll, I'll probably talk about that and um, or at least how it applies to me um, and my plans for next year and then there was another book that I got from the library called Remake It which is about um, repurposing and recycling uh, existing garments 
and, and making them into something else wearable. Some of the outfits in there have been quite um, interesting <laughs> and not necessarily practical for um, a nearly 40 year old stay at home mum. <laughs> I can't see me sitting up for a toddler group um, wearing this little halter neck dress made out of an old man's shirt. Yeah. It's not going to work, but um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those next time. And then hopefully the time after uh, I will have finished or be very nearly finished the rest of outfit number four. And then we'll see where we go from there. All right, then. Thank you very much for listening and uh, watching. And I hope you all have a nice week. Bye bye.